<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself You got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody to the Cult Classic Horror Show. Danny Bonin here with you. Welcome guys, Scotty back with you as well. We are the, the Blood, Blood Brothers. Brothers. Yes. Joined by the infamous Rob O'Neill again. Hi guys, how's everybody doing? What's up Robbie? R-O, that's what you say on my Skype screen right now, R-O. The one and only R-O, Rob O'Neill. Ro. Back in the house. You're listening to the Rob and the Blood Brothers on KBLB. <laughs> oh, I think it was KV. I actually I forgot what it was. K O K O K L A or something. Yeah, they they had, they had to throw it in there. <laughs> something like that. It's like it, it like reminded me of Oklahoma, like K O K L O, O K A L O or something. Ah, uh, there's 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 no there there are lots of weird little. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little like quirks in this movie, including Dennis <laughs> Hopper's leisure suit. Yes, Dennis, oh, yeah. Dennis Hopper's suit was uh, a conversation piece, right? Yeah, D Dennis Hopper's suit compared to the skills of the girl's radio announcer voice, which was uh, Stretch. Her name was Stretch. And then Dennis Hopper was Lefty, which I, was kind of funny. I mean, I don't know where Stretch came from, but I'd probably stretch her over the counter and put it in her butt. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> this guy over here. <laughs> yeah, she was pretty hot. She, yeah, the, the the plot of this movie was what was a stretch. Yeah, it was a stretch. <laughs> it was a stretch to the left. That's it, that's, that's where was. they got their nicknames. Yeah, it was subtext for the the uh, quality of the movie. <laughs> that that suit made up for the movie. I mean, I I his leisure suit with lapel shoot suit and the cowboy hat. It got a little dusty though when he was tearing down the place, but you know, he, he <laughs> He's running it. around. He was just running around tearing it down and just screaming at the top of his lungs, and <laughs> and, and, and nobody hears. Yeah, they don't hear shit down there. Yeah, no one heard anything. It was, it was like, yeah, that he's tearing up the place above you. Yeah, you guys can't hear any of that. <laughs> it, it was. It, it was the, the first one. It just. It just goes to show you, like. Canon film, oh, Canon God. films is just the worst. Oh yeah, they yeah. they screwed this whole. I mean, of what of what Toby Hooper wanted, they just screwed the whole thing up, and uh, it was nothing like the first one. If we're trying to compare movies, yeah. I I like the first one a lot better. <clears throat> no, it just it, oh it was, but but the Canon does everything. It's just you could just tell. I mean, you didn't even have to have the beginning with Canon films. You, Soon, as about like ten minutes into the movie, you're like, oh, "Okay, okay, this, this is really bad '80s." Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you just bad '80s horror movie. You just hear the opening music and uh, <clears throat> you sort of just die a little inside. Yeah. You you go from the first movie, which has like the creepy sound and awesome like kind of soundtrack, which they didn't really do much for, but it was creepy and awesome. And then you go to like the '80s soundtrack. For this 1986 movie, and it was like, God damn it, here we go again, 80s 80s horror movie. But oh, it was it was bad. Yeah, you know the first one, uh, they actually, you know, they they spent like a year editing that thing, and and I know we did the episode last week, but uh, they they mixed, it. they did all the sound for it uh, at Toby Hooper's house, so he edited it at his house, and he did all the sound at his house. And he had just these random instruments set up, like the most, 
you know, uh, backwoods, ghetto-built instruments or noisemakers you could possibly imagine making up all the sound of the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, they just had random, he had random stuff in his house that he made for, like, instru- instruments and cool sound effects, and that's how they did it in, like, his living room. It was awesome. And, and Toby, Toby Hooper's a good director. I mean, he... he uh, poltergeist. I mean, he's done. He's yeah. done some good things, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, Nakam, Manakam, Golan, and, and him and his cousin from Canon, the two Israelis, just it was like you know, there's a guy with a chainsaw, and he doesn't like you, but he likes her because she's hot, and 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 we have Dennis Hopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have Dennis Hopper, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we could talk about that first. How they, how. Cannon really sort of fucked him over in this whole, uh, this whole film. I guess, I guess, um, you know, Toby had this vision for the film. He didn't even want to direct it. He just wanted to produce and and co-write it. But they couldn't find a director to stay within their budget, and so he ended up directing this thing and slash producing it. Too. Yeah, and so the whole time while he's on set trying to Executive. direct this thing, um, Cannon is just like. You know, they're looking over the shoulder for the whole time. They're pulling money here. They're placing money there. They're just, they're trying to really run the show and not let Toby do his thing. And so, I mean, tons of stuff was cut out. They had like a massive, uh, they had a bunch more effects that Tom Savini did that that was in there that got cut out. Um, uh, Yeah, just just a lot of stuff. Yeah, didn't didn't Canon Films like cut the whole thing themselves? They, They like took it, cut it. And didn't let Toby Hooper do anything with it. Yeah, pretty and much. And then they just they fucked it all up, you know. So it's it w- it would have been a lot better. And they were trying to compare this. They wanted it to be just as good or better than the first one, but it didn't even compare to the 1974 one. And this is 12 years later. This was 1986. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was. It's crazy. He did Poltergeist in 1982. And then he did, and then he got on contract like with Canon and did Life Force, Invaders from Mars, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Years. But uh, but but Canon Canon Films, there's a great documentary on Netflix called uh, Electric Boogaloo, and they they did it to everything. And you know the, these were the guys behind Bloodsport and the He-Man movie, Masters of the Universe, and uh, over the top, the arm wrestling movie was, was you know, I mean, the, the, all the uh, Chuck Norris movies. I mean, these guys were were like the geniuses behind, like straight to DVD or straight to VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's, apparent. Yeah, that's and, totally apparent. Yeah. So we, I want to put, I just want to put it out there, like we we talked about it before we jumped on the call here. If you guys listening to this, Rob might have some audio issues, might not. You know, we're in Colorado, Rob's in Florida. We we uh, record this over Skype whenever we have him on the show, and so I'm hoping it's just our audio that we're hearing. But in case you guys listen to this episode and Rob's cutting in and out just a little bit, then uh, just fucking deal with it. So yeah, it's it's a part <laughs> of a live podcast, guys. That's what's awesome about it. Um, yeah, this... y'all, y'all just here. <laughs> You know he's here in in the, in the building. We just got to go down to Florida, I guess. Yeah, rock it down in Florida with 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 the Gators. Um, yeah, y'all can come up down here. It's like it's tomorrow. It'll be about a hundred degrees, fifty percent humidity all day. Shit, oh, man. I wouldn't like that. It was like a hundred and two or three. 103 it's, here yesterday. It's been it's been high nineties, two hundreds here the last yeah. few last few days so. too. But no humidity. It's just dry. <laughs> No, no, it's miserable here. But, God, but uh, so, so the best part of the movie to me was when it, it really just grabbed me. First started, and you have these two douchebags in like a convertible Mercedes, yeah, and shooting a pistol. And it doesn't matter if you're a gunsmith or not. He's putting softball size holes in the sides with this little pistol, and you're just like, okay, I'm in. This is <laughs> yeah. This movie. This movie. Went from credits where I saw Cannon. I knew I knew what I was in for. Like the first five minutes of the movie, and you're just like, this movie is completely insane. It's just completely nuts. Yeah, it was. I, I it wanted was to. Totally I wanted to nuts. fucking kill those guys. Like, like they were very annoying. 
<laughs> yeah, they. I, I, I knew right off the bat they were drunk, drinking, driving, shooting the pistol. I knew they were going to get killed like any, any, any minute, and it happened. I don't know if people know, but we are talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, guys, just to let you know. That's what we're it's on, on. It's on. It's on YouTube for free. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Yeah, I, I, yes. That's actually where we watched it. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's where we watched it. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, like, my grade for this movie is, you know, some movies are so bad that they're they're good. And then yeah. there are some movies that are so bad that they're just bad. Now, if I had to buy this movie on iTunes or Amazon, would I wouldn't recommend. But if it's free, which it is, knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this was, like, epic. It is, and it, it is... A cool classic, and uh, people love it too. So, we like to cover those kind of. Yeah, it has a films. huge following. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, so, some people love this and follow this more than they do the original. Like they think that they're two completely different genres. Yeah, you know, because this they this is just, pretty much are. <laughs> yeah, this, this is just crazy. And, and Toby Hooper, I think, was trying to have fun with this, mm-hmm. yeah. but it but it got cut. To where you know it, it, I think it took itself a little bit more seriously than than he was going for. Well, and Toby talks about how they cut it, and now it's it's even a little bit. It doesn't flow as well as his original cut does. It's it's a little bit inconsistent, uh, a little bit harder to follow. Not that it was really hard to follow, but uh, that was one of his comments. You know how they just butchered it, uh, and then and we'll probably never see. I mean, there is a couple versions with longer footage some cuts put back in but he said the full thing will probably never be put back together just because all that he doesn't even know where all that material is at yeah so but yeah we um yeah we said 1986 uh written by toby hooper and uh well written by lm kit carson whoever the yeah you know, that was the actually the writer lm kit carson um so toby hooper didn't write on this one um just wanted to produce it but they Toby was trying to uh, sort of a little bit like like expand on the Texas Chainsaw story. Maybe a little bit of the background, like mm-hmm. why are they doing this? Here's some more of the characters. Whereas Canon just had it in their heads. We just want to, we just basically want to redo the first one and, and, and do the same thing, but put some more blood in it. And yeah. so that's where you had the clash of styles coming in and it sort of turned into this. I mean, it, it was a decent movie, you know, it's entertaining uh, enough. Yeah, and, and like like you said, Rob, there's plenty of people that that are just diehard fans of this movie, and I know some of you guys are listening, and and so I mean, me personally, I'm I'm a big I'm a, I like the first one much better. That's just more my tone and qual and you know the terror, the the rawness of it. Yeah, it was uh, it was more the first one was more or the first one was more raw terror, sheer terror, like you're freaked out, and the second one is more comedic and more you know like geeky and stuff yeah so. if you like the dark comedy black comedy horror uh a little bit over the top characters uh then you know this one is definitely your cup of tea and uh, like when it started out i really was like ah fuck this movie when those two guys driving the car and the 80s music i was like damn i'm not into this at all but i it sort of saved itself for me a little bit when like because i i like real fucked up so like when when he put the friend's face on the dj when she's down in the pit there <laughs> I was like, this is badass that, she, that she's wearing her friend's face and his cowboy hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was rough. <laughs> and then she got up and her friend uh, miraculously is still alive. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> LJ? Yeah. LG. LG. Yeah, he, was a, he was a trooper, man. Yeah. yeah. He kind of looks like Robert Shea. Yeah, we, I thought he was we saying. I thought he was Bob Shea at first. I was like, <laughs> hey. But it wasn't so. Well, so, so Toby Hooper gave him some cameo in this. Oh, he, did he? Where? Yeah, when 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 she goes to his hotel room, Toby Hooper, you see him pretending to be drunk with his cigar, and uh, he just he just like dude, he just kind of like 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 merges or just kind of walk stumbles across the screen real quick. So I got kind of a laugh out of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to had to pull uh, Robert Shea, stick himself in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, what's, 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 what's what's funny is New Line, New Line, a lot of the stuff after this. Yeah, they they put out their face and several ones after this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, New Line's got to get their hands on every everything horror that was going on in the late eighties. Yeah, eighties for sure. <laughs> Freddie, Jason, now this. Yeah. 
Well, it was it, it was it was definitely entertaining. I, I just there were certain things in this movie that were like you talk about the cuts and how they edited where I think scenes were actually much longer than they probably would have been to yeah pace, to keep the pacing right like the whole the whole scene where leatherface is in there with his chainsaw and he's just sawing a cooler full of sodas yeah <laughs> you just, you're like what do you and then he does like weird frutata dance you know like oh yeah, like, yeah. It was just, there's just certain things where you could just tell that okay we're gonna have him do a weird mad like you know, Jared's kid dance. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't stand the dance that actually. Dance and then his pelvic thrusting and stuff. The, the crazy wiggling with the chains up of his head. I I didn't like it. I didn't like. I mean, it. They, they made him really weird and in like in the scenes just took forever. Like the the whole point where Chop Top, the guy with the stainless steel plate in his head, yeah, to yeah, hunt. They of course they you could they they three times like they just were like oh I like that let's just put let's put. Yeah, and it was like you can almost tell like some of these scenes were you you, you should have gone one or the other, but they just kept just come on, let's keep filling the screen up, and it, it made the pacing a little strange. And yeah, it made Leatherface to. Uh, we lost you for a second there, Rob. How about now? Oh, cool. Gotcha. Cool. <laughs> I just the version of Leatherface wasn't scary. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I'm, I want to piggyback on that, too. I mean, from this version, Leatherface would not... I mean, from the from the first one, Leatherface would not spare anyone. And, of course, he spares the girl, like, four times in this uh, stretch. And uh, she... He would have just... In the first one, he would have just killed her. And, obviously, in the second one, he has a soft heart for her. He, you know, he, like... He, like finger bangs her with the chainsaw and uh and you know it sticks his tongue out and gets all sexual and sensual with her and and you know spares her life like like four times so you see like that soft side and and he does have a soft side in the first one too but he he's just totally different and well, this, and, and the whole mask was different too and this leather face was played by bill johnson who <clears throat> um yeah you know i gunner hansen's always going to be the original the go-to and yeah um I portrayed it much better, I thought, than than Bill did. But you know what can you do? It's tough to follow and act like that. So yeah, no, it is. It's just definitely a. You, you can definitely see where editing and production can like really make or break you. Yeah, yeah. and I, you know, I think so. Bill Mosley played Chop Top, and uh, I think he did a pretty good job. You know, a funny thing they they Toby Hooper found him because they did a little. Uh, like skit a little off skit called the Texas Chainsaw uh, Manicure Manicures, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he played like the crazy guy in that, and you know the lady gets her nails done by the chainsaw. I don't know. It's it's sort of a funny little skit, but mm-hmm. um, Toby Hooper's like, oh, I, I saw you played it in that, and uh, you know you want to come be in be in the movie, or or at least offered him an audition that way, and so. Uh, Bill Mosley was a big fan. Talked about how once he got on set and saw Jim Seed out, he was just sort of freaking out. And uh, but you know he was a, his character was a little over the top, uh, a little more if you like that dark comedy <clears throat> style. Uh, but I think he did a good job. It 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 wasn't. I liked the character that uh, what's his name played better Edwin. Edwin Neal. Edwin Neal. But because yeah. uh, I I obviously they're supposed to be like the same person. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was good. He still did a good job. I well, thought. I I thought um, Bill Bill Mosley did did do a good job, but he wasn't. He was kind of kooky, and he kept calling him Leatherface. Look at this Leatherface, and and like in the first yeah, one, I didn't like that. In the first one, Edwin Neal played it, and he would he wouldn't call him anything. He's like, Care. you know, he was just so creepy, and he wouldn't call him by Leatherface name. So that was just kind of weird. His own, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's like they they kind of. The, the way that they got this, or the way the way that it was, the way the, the finished product that we get to see, was they just they really beat a dead horse a lot because mm-hmm. his character was really crazy, and for me, in certain parts, it bordered on like, okay, he's you know he's nuts, you know I I got gotcha. you, but but he did I think everybody did a good job. I just think that it was a really weird way to cut a lot of it together because. 
the the story moves super super fast from when uh, uh Dennis Hopper gets there finding them to the playing the radio to them showing up to finding their left but they just they 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 certain scenes just like they took forever drug on yeah drug on and and I didn't know I mean they they called Leatherface Bubba too and I never knew if that was I don't know if that's just like his real name or something or but uh, that was just interesting thing that I that I picked up on too but yeah there the scenes did drag on a little bit and they didn't like go anywhere for like a while. I'm like, okay, what's gonna happen here? You know, and finally, it went to the next scene. You know, but and so they had they had way more money. Obviously, a bigger budget. The budget on this one, uh, four point seven million. About it grossed a little over eight million mm. uh, U.S. So not that great. Yeah, and and once again, we we didn't really expand on it in the last episode, but a lot of the actors sort of got screwed again uh, as far as money goes. You know, the last one was a whole thing where. Uh, they thought they were getting a percentage of of a hundred percent of the movie, but the company that was paying them only owned like half of the rights, and so they were getting a percentage of a percentage, and mm. and all this nonsense. And then it ended up being like a mobster who owned that comp, you know, the the distribution company, and, yeah. and the money couldn't be accounted for, and they had to sue out of they accepted a settlement out of court for a smaller amount and barely got paid anything, but. But then they talked about how Canon sort of screwed everyone on this movie. Like, they they had this big budget. They had a, a decent opening, you know, not not a bunch. But the actors talk about how we didn't really get paid much, and and the the money never showed up, and what the hell's going on? And they, no one, could, cared enough or had enough money to go sue or at least have the books looked at. But they're yeah. all still sort of like, what the hell? So must be cursed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's just it's crazy too because I, you know, there, there's people go around and say like movies, huge movies, Saving Private Ryan and stuff like that, that the studios pay out residuals. They say, oh well, the movie still hadn't made its money back yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just crazy. But like this movie, almost doubled its money. But you know, especially with canon, nobody saw a penny. Yeah. You know, af- afterwards, there's just no way. Yeah. But but I I I. I if I did like, I did like all the crazy lighting and stuff. You know, everything was really instead of being so dark and dirty, everything was really like carnival. I mean, yeah. oh, total carnival. The, yeah, the lighting was just was just nut down in their little lair over there. It was it, it was really cool. I, I thought I thought that there were some really fun things about. It. I mean, it's a fun movie. I think yeah, the fun. very fun too. And and you got Jim Cito back again from the first one. He's uh, what 12, 12 years older, but he's still that nagging dad or you know father figure, and has his chili cook off. You know, he obviously he cooks the human meat in there, and so so he pl- plays a you know a remembrance part from the first one that kind of makes it better too. And of course you had the Dennis Hopper, um, and that layer was cool down in that dungeon and stuff. It's pretty awesome when Dennis Hopper comes in and and Jim Cedow totally thinks he's he's from another like catering company or something yeah <laughs> oh, that, that was hilarious. who sent you was it they don't they don't have the guts to come down and, and, and try to steal my recipe yeah so. exactly he did not care about him getting killed he's uh, worried about his about his recipe <laughs> but it's crazy I thought, I, I, I thought that was funny the whole the whole subplot is like you know really tell you where the family's from or anything but it's like we just they're they're in this to have like the best food chuck wagon uh-huh. <laughs> in Dallas, it was really funny. Speaking of that food chuck truck, uh, those freaking car phones that they had in the first scene, and that Jim Cito had Drayton, I guess, had in in his truck. They have car phones back in '86. God, I, I bet they did, but I probably if you went back. And, I, I bet if you went back and researched, it, those car phones were probably like, like ten grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no <laughs> shit, God. Yeah, there were just some. I mean, if we walked through the film, there were just some some things that there were more things that I didn't like than that I did like. But mm-hmm. I, I'm so I'm not, you know, I, there might be some diehard fans for it, and uh, and I also want to say too that not a lot of uh, even though there is hype around this movie and sort of a following, there's not a lot of behind the scenes type stuff. There's a lot of still images. There's um, just some here and there mentioning in the in the documentaries that are mostly on the first one. Yeah. Um, 
If we had the Blu-ray, it'd be cool to get our hands on the commentary because I know they had a special release uh, Blu-ray that had commentary by Hooper, uh, I think Cedow even, mm-hmm. and a couple of the other guys. But um, yeah, I, I'd like yeah. to know more about what happened in the uh, behind the scenes. And there's there's ru- there was rumors. We we lost you again for a second there, Rob. You got me back now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rumors. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's rumors going around that. When when Canon when Canon like previewed the film, they called Hooper up and they were like, "I can't sell crap and everything else." They, they didn't know what film they were watching. They <laughs> and, and they never would admit that they you know they thought they were screening one thing, but they were seeing the other. They called them up and said, "Oh, this has got to get moved." It just was complete chaos. It was it was all mid eighties cocaine driven Hollywood yeah. chaos. They're the ones that messed it up, God. Yeah, yeah. But we but we do know it was filmed in Texas too, again, and uh there was that, that first the chainsaw store that Dennis Hopper goes into was cut right chainsaws in Austin, Texas. And now it's actually a barbecue joint too and so yeah, that's um, sort of uh, ironic. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's a barbecue joint. As of course, I don't think they cook people though. Yeah, they don't cook people there. Like, so, like Drake. Well, well, then, then what's the point of going? I just yeah. want to put it out there while we're talking about like some some facts we know, and then we share opinions. I'd like, like, if you guys are listening to this and you're like that diehard fucking, you've watched this with with all eight commentaries or whatever, and you're like, oh, this. Well, he had. I mentioned this on one of our Evil Dead episodes. Uh, I don't, you know, don't message me with like, oh, well, well, you got this like little detail wrong because, uh, just, we had like some douchebag was messaged or what, like commented about how there were two errors in our shit on the last episode. And I'm like, dude, chill out. We just watch the documentaries and share what we learned and then give our opinions. Like we're just here to have fun and talk about horror. Yeah. So you don't have to be a fucking douchebag and be like. Oh, there were two errors in your podcast. Uh, first time and last time I'm listening to your episodes. It's like, well, get the fuck out of here, douchebag. We just want to have fun, talk about horror. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, yeah. you can sit, you can sit Toby Hooper down, and Toby Hooper couldn't tell you yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. all happened. You know, I mean, more power to you, but it, it's an opinion. I'm sorry, it was a really fun movie, but but this movie goes into the catalogs like you want to watch some really bad and crazy okay here i got this for you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's the whole point i mean it was toby hooper's not not sitting there on the commentary and stuff and being like well even if this was cut right it's not going to be schindler's list i mean this this, this, this movie's just to be fun and yeah, it, yeah it was it was insanely it was but, and even but, he's not going to remember everything that happened and every little <laughs> syllable and every little thing you know so He's he's there to have fun, and that's what this movie was all about. It was it's just a fun ride, and that's what we're here to do too. We're here. We to didn't have even fun. say it yet, but Tom Savini, his hand in on this. Yeah, special makeup effects. Of, well, yeah, that's all. That's of course. Well, he's in the films at times too. True. Oh, the 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 head getting cut. In two, and the Mercedes was great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could tell. I mean, you could tell this was Tom Savini esque, and uh, it just seems like he's got his hands in everything. You know, everything back in the eighties. Yeah, he's he had a part in everything. God. And I think he even. Uh, I think he did have a cameo in this, but they cut that out too. Uh, I did read that, so he was supposed to be somewhere in it. Yeah, they were, but, they were comparing because he did Leatherface. His actual face. Yeah, and they're comparing it to the first one and how it was a little more ragged and more stitched well, up. Well, basically, stuff. what they were saying is like the first one looks more genuine in the first film, like like uh, Leatherface Skin. actually did it himself. It was sort of raw and uh, rudimentary, whereas this face is almost uh, it looks Tom Savini esque, like he like someone professionally did it, you know. So yeah, well, it's like. The actual person under the mask, Bubba, or whatever you want to, whatever his name is, it looks like Savini put prosthetics on him. his lips were weird, and he it, it looked it looked a little bit the, the the character, the person himself looked different to me. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. he did. I mean, for sure, his teeth were messed up though too, and it kind of had this a, a, a similar feel, but it, it it did look totally different. So. 
Yeah, no, it's that's true. But... Oh, hey! Oh, oh, what is that? Shit, what is that noise? It's time. What? It's what time? time is it? It's the horror <laughs> half time. <laughs> I was the waiting pain. for Rob to come in with something before. <laughs> well, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to be gentle here. Like, I'm focusing all my positive energy on the internet connection, staying good enough. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I know. You're right. I know. We all must pray to the internet gods that Rob stays strong. <laughs> stay connected, Rob. Do not leave us. Hopefully, the audio will stay connected. I saw. I actually was looking on the on the Facebook page. I saw some really cool looking uh, Texas Chainsaw memes. There was some pretty funny stuff. Oh, there was a couple good ones there. So uh, there's some great ones. I actually, you know, I forgot to pull it up because I need to give. All right, let me. I got the page right here. I'm looking down it. So I'll start with that. I'm definitely awarding someone horror freak of the week, and uh, I just got to look here again real quick because I forgot to write write it down. Yeah. So I know Anthony DeMarkey I reposted the one he posted because it was fucking hilarious to get hooked on cult classic horror. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, and uh, if you're listening, Anthony, I know you won like what a month or two ago. It's probably like two months ago. Shit, all you guys keep posting. It's like all the same guys. Because Justin, I'm pretty sure I sent you some shit too. So, uh, fuck it. I'll just send Anthony more shit because he posted like three memes and they were all pretty damn good. Yeah, these are really good memes. <laughs> Anthony, you rock, man. So, uh, yeah, Anthony, Horror Freak of the Week again. We will send you some cool shit. Uh, yeah, we won't, we'll send something different this time. So it'll be a surprise. And then you can take a picture. We'll post it. Everyone will know then. These are so. some great memes here. Anyways, I was, I was cracking up scrolling through them. There were some really good ones. It was like, I man, Texas Chainsaw just, y'all see a really good turnout with that one. People yeah. were all over the place. People yeah. love it. People man. love it. I mean, I, I, I love it too. It's it's one of my so favorites. So, what? All right. So, this week, we're on Texas 2. There's some, like, really good meme opportunities with the sec- with this one here. With Tom Savini getting his hand on it, there's a lot of blood and, you know... And Dennis Hopper. I mean, he's, he's such a standout character. And Chop Top, I mean, come on. So, we gotta give this one a shot with the memes. So, I wanna see your original Texas Chainsaw 2 memes. Post them on Colt Classic Horror, Facebook.com slash Colt Classic Horror. Uh, and on Instagram, tag us at Colt Classic Horror. And you could win Horror Freak of the Week. So. Do it. Do it now. All right. That concludes. You'll, you'll, be, all, you'll be all swagged up. <laughs> swagged up. Swagged, baby. So, uh, all right. That concludes the Horror <laughs> Halftime. So, yeah, let's do I want to well, do, do like a quick rundown of this thing. So, you know, it starts out. I just want to sort of see what everyone thinks of, you know. The flow, if, if we can remember the flow. So it starts out those two fucking oh, assholes. Oh, I, I, I can remember the flow because <laughs> I, I, I ended up watching it again tonight. Did you? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it, it was on YouTube, so I was like, I, okay, I'm just going to watch it again and kind of fast forward here or there. Hey, it's free. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah, so they we start out with the two fucking assholes driving the car. I don't know why. I just like... I just wanted to. I wanted them to die fast, really bad, and they pretty much did. They pretty much did. I can, so. I can hear the disdain and hate in your heart for these poor senior kids from whatever Red River, Texas. Oh, yeah. dude, I I would kill them myself. <laughs> that one guy had such a nice chap sweater. I yeah, mean, you're they, right. They yeah, seemed right. like they were really good guys and Rick the Brick or whatever <laughs> stupid shit his name was. <laughs> And the other guy had those like cool neon sunglasses with the eyes in them, you know. Those weren't cool. They were shitty. <laughs> I'm gonna try to find. I remember those, those things. God. We need to find those and sell them in the horror store. But, oh yeah, put them up. <laughs> They're like like hologrammed lenses. I guarantee you, I can find them for like a buck a piece. I bet. I, I wonder. I wonder if it's budgetary because these guys are supposed to be like, you know prep guys but they couldn't afford ray bands oh, so they yeah. were like <laughs> yeah so so they you know play chicken with the the chevy pickup that the other guys which have. which was uh the steelhead play um, the guy so i just wanna, i just want to put in there that it was a cool concept and i love the guy's head getting chopped in half 
But, I mean, come on. There's no way that that truck would reverse as fast as they're driving. And there's no way that if that was going on, they wouldn't, like, slam on the brakes or slam on the gas. And then the last thing was that bridge was, like, 30 miles long. Yeah, they kept going. <laughs> just like you were saying, Rob, the scene just kept going and going and going. It's like, dude. And, and he, why Why did Leatherface have a a weird get up with a dead body in front of him. Yeah. Well that, yeah. Why, why wasn't it just him? Yeah. Why wasn't it just him there? That's scary enough. And then obviously the, the kid with the goggles is some kind of a marksman. He shot the head of the doll or the, <laughs> yeah. or the thing going like, you know, 127 miles an hour. And, yeah. you know, and he's like, he shoots him and he hits him and he's like, Oh yeah. And then, Nothing. You just I was, that part of me was like screaming at the computer, like, "Are you kidding me right now?" <laughs> and, and then during this time, he's holding the phone as he's on the radio air the whole yeah. time, and they're listening to him. And they the radio can't hang up the phone. Yeah, why for the some fuck? Reason. Why can't? They, is that a thing at radio? Like old radio stations? Can you not hang up the phone or something? Well, I, I assume it's just a phone. I mean, because she was talking on like a regular. She was talking on like a your phone, like a kitchen phone. It's like just yeah. just, just just hanging up. But what I don't get is like yeah. he never he never dropped the cell phone. He's like, oh my god, we're being attacked. But I'd, li- I'd like to request Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack shooters, please. And it's like, it's like what the hell's going on here? Yeah, he's like, my there's a chainsaw right next to my head, and I'm I'm holding on to this fucking phone for yeah, dear life. Not dropping the phone. <laughs> that that chainsaw split though was pretty badass. I mean, his friend with the with the stupid glasses looks. Looks over and you just see his head oh. just fall off and blood squirt. It was out. awesome. So that was badass. That was awesome. Yeah, that that was great. But I don't think you ever saw the chain. I even hit him. No, I didn't. Like it's I, just. I, it, I, I, yeah. I even no. watched. It. I was thinking, well, maybe there was a small scene where it like grazed. Him. I wonder if that was a reshoot to get a different angle. And yeah. like, no, nah, no, 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 screw it. But the prosthetic was awesome. That yeah. Was awesome. Yeah. Kudos to Savini. So, so, so it was so Savini with the hands. Oh yeah, you know, up there. And... Yeah, it was badass for sure. But then, so then, obviously, right. obviously they crash and uh, crash and burn, and she gets it all recorded because the fucking idiot's holding the phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know. Then we're introduced to Dennis Hopper in his leisure suit uh, on the side of the road in his station yeah. wagon. And who's there? Like, <laughs> uh, so. Who's there before the cops? Because those guys look like they were they were like tow truck drivers or from an auto mechanic store, yeah. all wearing jumpsuits. There's like six of them. They're like wearing Dickies Dickies jumpsuits. And then like the cops roll up. It's like who are these fucking random guys in jumpsuits that set up caution tape and is and is pulling people? They didn't have fire uniforms on, you know. And I love I love the cop explanation. He's like, you know, we get these people in town. They don't even care about football. It's like. What? what? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Where would that come from? Yeah, so that was a good introduction for Hopper's character, though. Shows him, you know, a little bit of a eccentric badass. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he has, he has to have a, He has to either be, like, putting a cigarette out. Yeah. And then, obviously, then we, uh, we get introduced to... Are you there, Rob? Sorry, we lost yeah. you for a sec. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Sorry, there you are. We, that's why Scotty cut you off, because we lost you. That's oh, good, but yeah, but no, he's, he's got to be lighting a cigarette, putting yeah. one out. Or, oh, yeah. in, or in like, he, 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 he smokes cigarettes like he's contemplating really deeply. Uh-huh. He's, he's like... Uh, thinking about it. He's like, he has to have a reason to smoke, sort of like Ed Harris in Creepshow, you know? It's like the Strike yeah. Anywhere matches, that's why he smokes. Yeah. <laughs> Leisurely smokes. I had to bring that one back, sorry. <laughs> no, you gotta have it. But then, yeah, then we're introduced to well, we're Jim, I guess he's introduced Jim Cito to, or Jim Cito. That's right. That's right. The chili cookoff champion. Yeah, yeah. Straight, which, Drayton Sawyer, which is, is totally. I guess at first I was like, would he really be out like in the public with these people? But if you think back to the first Texas Chainsaw, he is sort of the only one of them that you know he runs the gas station. It's kind of normal. Yeah, he, he crazy. he's able to act normal. He's able to interact with the public. He's sort of like their connection to the outside world. So he's like, he's like a happy, crazy, normal guy. Yeah, so it was fine that he was at the chili cook-off, I think. 
and he won second year in a row for his. Yeah. Oh, what what is that part where the girl like tastes it and there's like a finger there's like a fingernail that's in there or something? Tooth. Oh yeah, it's a tooth. tooth. Oh, that's part of the chili. Uh, it's the uh, the chili cover or whatever he said. He's always mumbling. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> So that that was that was good shit. Yeah, and then uh, and then obviously the girl. Are you there, Rob? Yeah, I'm here. Gotcha. The cool. the girl was which is Carolyn Williams is her name. Stretch. Then she tries to bring the tape to Dennis Hopper, and he ushers her out and stuff. And which I thought was weird because he's all about finding them, and he's been tracking them down for years now, and. And she's like, I got, I recorded the whole thing. I believe you. Let's do this. And he's like, you'll just get in my way. I, you need to get out of here. Yeah. And doesn't even care about the tape at all. Yeah, that, that was just really weird. But I guess, I don't know. I guess he needed a reason to kick her out so that she could come back later. I don't, yeah, I don't so, really know. So he could meet her at the radio station. I'm not, and I'm not really sure what the fuck was going on in the hallway. Like, yeah. is that, are they, is that just like football weekend again that we don't know anything about? <laughs> People just drunk and going yeah, I, crazy I, in the hallway. <laughs> I, th- I think I think the movie was like an inside text joke that some of us might just not get. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're, we're, was she staying? Was he like renting out uh, a dorm room in a frat house, or is that what every apartment complex is like on a uh, football weekend or something? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I don't know, and I really don't know how close Dallas, Oklahoma. Like, I need to Google that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah, think, I don't think it's close at all. No, yeah, no. So that was a little strange, um, but happened. Yeah. What? Why? What do they go into after that? That's sort, did, of, sort did, of. Doesn't he go get the chainsaws? F after after that. Then it's awkward. Yeah, it's the chainsaw buying montage. Yeah, he just goes in there, does, doesn't even say a word, and he lays down cash. I don't. I wonder. Even if he had enough cash there, yeah, that like, didn't look like enough cash for three it chainsaws. It looked like five dollars, like or like eight dollars, like all singles. <laughs> well, it was hundreds for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, I just saw the one. I mean, it was hundreds, but I don't and know. It, he, he picks up like the two two small chainsaws, and they are clearly toys. They <laughs> yeah. have, they're, they're clearly made out of completely. Yeah, they're like the lightest chainsaws. They're like light as a feather. He's God, like but that, that big one is badass. Oh, that thing was huge. Yeah. That was nice. He must have been a really strong guy to carry two small chainsaws on his side and a big chain. Those, those things got some weight to them, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, they do. God. And I never saw him once refill them. No. No. No, you never see Leatherface refill them either. Those chainsaws are... Same with, like, uh, Ash and Evil Dead. Those same chainsaws... They must just run on passion or something. Yeah, no <laughs> gasoline needed. But yeah, no the 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 chainsaw buying scene. He was just he was just in the zone. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. He was in the zone. He bought him. Then he went out and started hacking that log. And then the old man's like gets all excited. Yeah, what was that? About? <laughs> that old man like came in his pants. <laughs> he was all excited that the Dennis Hopper was going crazy on the uh, on the big log. I'm like, calm down, like, old man. Like, this random cowboy in a leisure shoot, suit driving a station wagon. It's like, no red flags were up. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and now he's like whacking the, the, the fucking log like... I. It wasn't a natural chainsaw movement. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. That's not, not how you do it. I don't think... I, Dennis Hopper probably had never ran a chainsaw until this movie. Probably not. <laughs> Yeah. Probably the, he didn't run a chainsaw till that take. He's like, I got it, guys. Don't worry. And he had a cigarette, of course, at the same time. There, there doesn't seem to be any concept of time. No, not not at all, <laughs> not at all. Because he he leaves there. He goes to meet her. She plays the tape, and then you know the chili. He hears it. It's still dead right outside. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's it's like this took place over like two days, but he still has the chili cook off trophy and is still writing. And, and and like why? So she plays the tape, and, and I don't know. I don't really understand. Okay, I, I guess it red flag. She plays the tape. They hear it on the radio because it was a request from and, a fan, which and, was and obviously they lefty. and they go to to kill her to shut her up, right? But she doesn't really know anything. She just has this tape 
like how's it going to lead back to them? And and so I I don't know. They, I don't. I didn't think it was a very good reason for them to come kill her. Well, no, I mean it's it, it, it left the car and all the evidence of the murder. So who who cares about this being played? Yeah, and I guess that your explanation could just be they're just fucking crazy and they want to kill some yeah. people, which is fine, you know. So, but but yeah, no, it was, and then it was like as soon as the tape was played, what ten minutes like at their doorstep? Yeah, yeah. ten yeah. minutes in, Bill Bill Mosley or what? What's the guy with the steel plated yeah. head? He's just sitting there, like just sitting there, uh, picking his scab and eating it. God, <laughs> oh, I was. That was pretty disturbing. That was that was. <laughs> Once you realized what he was doing, you were like, "Yeah, he's fucking crazy." Dude. That's how this these movies are. They always there. There's something weird that's happening, you know. And like in the first one, when Edwin Neal cut his face, you know, and cut his hand, and this one he cuts his throat. Cuts his throat, and he still has the shaver, the the razor. Yeah, too. straight razor. Straight razor. So. But yeah, that then obviously Le, Le, Leatherface comes out of the record little room and starts going after her, and she walks into the, in into the room and and yeah, at first he's going, he's sawing that steel that that big door, but then to the right there's just drywall that he could have just gone through, which he eventually does. But uh, and then then that comes to the cooler sawing, of course, too. Which is insane to me. I just, that was another one of those scenes that just took forever. You're just like, what? Why, why are you sawing? Why, yeah. why are you sawing up sodas? And, and, and she keeps screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And you're just like, damn. Yeah. Diet soda. You're real upset about this diet soda, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's the difference yeah. between... Because uh, I saw this a little bit in the first one. And I think that... I could be wrong. But I think it's the difference between... Toby following his own vision in the first one, and then maybe him trying to follow his vision for this one, and uh, maybe Cannon stepped in, maybe that was a specific instance, I don't know. But in the first one, there's a part where, sort of when they first open up on the dinner table scene, um, Sally's freaking out, and there's just sort of a lot of changing camera angles back and forth on people, back and forth on her screaming, back to... The cook laughing and giggling, and then back to the other guys fucking around, and then back to her screaming, back to the cook, and there's it sort of goes on for a while, and you're in your head, you're sort of like, what the fuck is going on right yeah, now? It's just all chaos. But it's it, but it, it worked. Like it was played off well, and it, it just sort of like yeah, it gave you that chaos. It's very chaotic right now, mm. and that's these guys just don't give a fuck. Whereas maybe he was going for that in this scene and was interfered with and it's, and it just ended up being her screaming a lot and him fucking chainsawing ice for and he, three minutes and straight. He, Leatherface was chainsawing ice where, uh, this guy with the tin plated head was smashing the guy's head with a hammer for like 10 minutes. Yeah. With, <laughs> and he was with not no dying. really visible damage to his head. LG. You know? Yeah. Just, it, just his hands flopping. But like you said, it went on and on. And oh Yeah. It was like it was like it, it, it. The first movie made you uncomfortable. This movie just didn't make you uncomfortable. It just it was kind of like you know it just took forever. You're yeah. like okay, okay. <laughs> it was like it's like beating with a head and his hands. And it's there's like, a there's a pool it, of blood underneath him, but there's really no like gouge to his head. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it's like it's... what? Sorry, we lost you for a second there, Rob. I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what'd you say? Well, I was saying it's, it's like it's like head pounding and everything else, and then it's like Leatherface killing a whole bunch of tabs. Yeah. Then back to head pounding again, and back to tabs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you know he's he he has the soft spot for her. He does the the fucking like groin thrust chainsaw thing, which I was like, what the hell is he and doing? The dancing like and a... same with holding the chainsaw and dancing around like he's in an African tribe or something like that. Yeah. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is going yeah. on right now? Like, what is he doing? And it looks like we just lost Rob. Oh, well. Had to happen at some point. Sorry, Robbie. We lost your brother. We will see you on another future episode soon. Damn Florida internet. Internet. Damn fucking internet connection. His internet completely crashed on him, so it dropped everything, but... Yeah, he's was just he just texted us. So, anyways, we'll uh, keep moving forward here. So, 
We're talking about how, yeah, definitely chainsawing ice for two minutes. And, Pelvic uh, thrust, the hammer thing. Yeah, it just wasn't really, wasn't really down with the, the whole, I don't know, just the new aura about him. The funky dance, the... Uh, the sexual tension. I don't know. Him, him even, he was more responsive in it too. Like when his brother said, did you kill him? And he does like the head nod and, and stuff. And he was kind of just like a kooky, weird, weird version of Le- of Leatherface. Not really like, you know, like mean and brutal like he was in the, in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, uh, God, I guess. They're both dead. What have what? So they leave, and then she follows him. That's right. Yep, she gets up, gets in her CJ seven, follows him. Like, why would you follow? Yeah. But you know, she wants to know. Yeah, I mean, she chases him down. Uh, Hopper's late, Lefty. so uses He's not there. uses her as bait basically to get these people there. Uh, follows her. That's what his plan was the whole time. Yeah, so she follows Bastard. him to this pretty. I guess it's what is it like a. Uh, uh, old abandoned like theme park type thing or yeah. something like like Rob was saying like almost like a carnival esque yeah underground layer that they 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 find so that plays out good she's following them but then she I like she sort of randomly drops through the floor just yeah. just the ground well Dennis Hopper like chases her with a car and she's like sandwiched between the truck and the car and all of a sudden. Under, underneath her, the like floor lights up, and there's like light going through crevices of a of a ground, yeah, and, and then it, she falls down. And obviously, it wasn't like no one a- activated it because they didn't even know she was there. Yeah. So it must be a trap door for that exact spot in the earth that she, lets them come yeah. down. I don't she, know. She was quite lucky to reach that spot. It was or unlucky. Yeah, <laughs> unlucky <laughs> and lucky. No. So then you know they go down, and this is where. It's where part of the movie was saved for me, where literally he's skinning LG and then yeah, that was puts the gruesome. face on her. So that was pretty cool. I, I thought like that was super fucked up and he it had won meat, me back a little bit. The uh, meat cutter just slicing part of his leg off and skin and just hanging it on, on the hooks yeah, there. That was cool. So uh, yeah, that won me back a little bit. But uh, So yeah, puts the face on her, he leaves. And yeah, LG the, comes alive. Yeah, so fucking crazy. I guess he was just nowhere. knocked out or something. I don't know. His face wasn't bludgeoned enough from from the hammer. The guy no, uh, definitely not didn't do a, the guy with the, the steel plated head didn't do a great job. Yeah, chopped up. Job chops his work. So, uh, but it, but yeah, it, this, so that was sort of cool. He was, I guess, maybe he was fucked up because he could barely cut the dang ropes off. Uh, maybe that was his concussion kicking in or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But then she he cuts the ropes and she just keeps his face on. Yeah, I'm on like for like a minute. I'm like, take the fucking. F- I, the first thing I would do when my hands got Get free off of me. is take the the stranger's face off my face. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> Obviously, that's not what happened. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? Get the face off your face right now. But then she finally does do it, but it was like after he fell down and then she put the face back on yeah, him. Puts which it back on Which him. he kind of looked like Leatherface when she put the face back on him. It, it, it looked very yeah, freaky. I think uh, I think most anyone wearing a person's face would look like Would look like Leatherface. Yeah, for sure. That's a given, but... Yeah, this is about the time uh, Dennis Hopper comes in and just starts cutting shit down and making all this noise. Screaming, and cutting shit down. No one even realizes it till like, you know, 20 minutes later or something. Until the underground layer starts crumbling with rocks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, which I think is, is crazy. He's just going ape shit, cutting shit down. It's like, what do you... He's he's sort of psycho himself. Yeah, you know, he's hunting, he is. He's hunting them down because, uh, what's his name, was his son? All right. Franklin? Yeah. Franklin... Or is that his... Well, he, he knew Franklin somehow. Yeah. There was a family connection there. And I think he was friends with the other people, too. The other friends um, that yeah. were in the first one. But anyways... So he's it's hunting, all connected to the yeah, first movie. Yeah, yeah. He knew them. He's hunting them down. Uh, he even finds Skeleton Franklin. Yeah, Skeleton Franklin in the wheelchair. Yeah. Which, would, I'll point out, in the first movie, he was he was he he had a flashlight that was a silver color. In this one, he has a flashlight still as a skeleton, but it's red, not silver. Yeah. The, and it, it still works, too. <laughs> they didn't have enough budget for silver flashlight. Yeah. They messed up with continuity there. 
<laughs> so he finds a skeleton. Um, yeah, they're finally, I think they're finally starting to realize he's chopping shit down. But they sort of redo the dinner table scene because mm-hmm. they get her at that dinner table. They have Grandpa back, which... Which he's 137 years old in this. That's and, I, what he says. and I thought, so I guess Grand, I think Grandpa's makeup was a little more believable in this one, but I sort of liked Grandpa's makeup better in the first mm-hmm. one. Yeah, they really did a lot of close-ups in this one on Grandpa's face of like his eyes and like the drooling and stuff. Um, so it was a little more believable, I think. But like you said too, the first one is just I just thought it was. A, was awesome. Yeah, I, and, you, I th- and you think he's dead, and then it's like a surprise when he's not dead in the first one. Yeah, you see his mouth moving, like, wait, is he really alive? <laughs> yeah, this one was a little more, okay, it's just an old guy with sort of a fucked up face. Yeah. Not, not quite the surprise or shock you get with the original grandpa. Sucking but, on a finger and stuff. Yeah, which is crazy, because as we said last time, the original grandpa's, you know, was like 19 years old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, they redo that. They even redo the whole grandpa with the hammer. Yeah. Grandpa, uh, Grandpa, hit that bitch! And I hit think that you, bitch! I think you could tell, I could tell anyways this time that it was a, a rubber hammer. Some kind really? of... I think so, because I could be wrong, but it, they actually hit her with it, he, and um, Seedow hit her pretty hard, but there was... It looked weightless in his hands, and there wasn't mm-hmm. really a big clunk, and, and it, the impact wasn't big. And uh, They talked about in the first one how that was a real hammer that they used. Because they don't hit her that hard. Yeah. Because Grandpa's doing it. But it's a real hammer and it does nick her a couple times. Yeah. And she was talking about how that, it actually did, you know, they hit her in the head lightly with a hammer. The first one was all real. They did not shy away. So. Yeah, so, so there was a lot of similarities of what they, like you said, of them trying to like kind of re-met, redo what they did in the first one and the whole Grandpa thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, and it's cool because it's all chaotic and stuff too. But uh, I thought it was funny when... Uh, well, we already talked about how Hopper comes down and Seedow thinks that he's from like another catering service or something, but yeah, to get his recipe. Yeah. I think it's funny how he's like slashing at his legs and then Seedow's under the table. He's like, he got my hammies yeah. <laughs> real good. Yeah. He got him right in the ass. It was funny <laughs> as hell. And then they, they have like a, a fate light, light hit. Um, Hopper and, Le- and Leatherface have like a chainsaw sword fight. Yeah. Which is kind of cool how that fight scene goes along. And he's just under the table the whole time and grabs the old lady corpse and just hangs out with her until he, until I'm assuming they all die from the grenade blow up. Yeah. And, you know, this all could have been avoided if Hopper would have just, instead of chainsaws, bought a couple shotguns and yeah. went down there. Yeah. <laughs> just blowing everyone away. Yeah. Just grab a couple double gauge shotguns. But then it wouldn't have been as epic, I guess. Yeah. You could totally see, tell that when the. His big ass chainsaw goes into Le- into Leatherface's stomach. That that was that was all Savini esque from the oh, yeah. blood squirting out, and his belly got like pregnant all of a sudden and huge. Yeah, that was some good shit. There. <laughs> that was some awesome shit there for sure. Um, you know, then she gets chased up into the top of the tower, and you have the grandma up there who apparently was still alive too. That was more of like Grandpa in the first one. This mm-hmm. grandma. There was, I mean, she looked deader and shit, but I guess she was, was she moving alive? still. That's what he said. He's like, you killed her, and she was sort of moving a little bit. Uh-huh. And, and and in her hand, she had the original green chainsaw from this 1974 version. Yeah. That yeah. was, it looked like that was the original one. And that's, of course, when you see, um, what's the guy with the plate head name again? Yeah, Chop, Chop Top. Chop Top. That's when you see her running up, and she's slashing, he's slashing her with the razor blade. From yeah, behind, just, just like, like the at, first movie. Yeah, at the end too. of the first one, too. So, uh, Yeah, a little bit of a throwback there. But, yeah, it ki- kills the grandma, apparently, and kills Chop Top, and then does a stupid little just like, like the first chainsaw one. dance. Like spinning and twisting around in yeah, like a ballet she circle. she was like dancing. She like held the chainsaw up, she does a couple ballet circles, and it's spin- I don't know what the fuck they were you know, trying to do there. I think it was reminiscent to the first one, too. You know, at the very uh, end of the first one, how he has the one hand, he's spinning around yeah, with the chainsaw. Yeah, that, but that's him, and, and Gunnar Hansen talked about how he did that because the character is supposed to be frustrated, and since he hadn't been very vocal, he didn't want to just sit there and scream. And he didn't want to like stomp the ground or anything because he looked like a whining baby. Yeah. So what would Leatherface do? Maybe he'd swing the chainsaw around like a madman. I think that's that's one of the most iconic horror moments in horror movie history is, yeah. is him doing that. 
you see that all over every clip and stuff. So I think... I guess obviously they tried to replicate it with her. I think it, that's what they were doing. It did not work at all. Yeah. She, she just looked like she was dancing with it. And it was just mm-hmm. very... It was way too intentional. Like, like these were the movements she was told to do. And yeah. she was blocked that way. And I just... I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. Yeah. One of, one of the cool things that I thought was cool about that layer too, as, as they walk through the first part, as she runs, she hears Dennis Hopper coming through the chainsaw. So she runs the other way as she passes all those skeletons. They're like skeletons set up in different little, um, corridors. So these people were so, they were crazy. Just like the first one setting up like corpses and skeletons that are rotting throughout that, throughout that hallway. So I thought, I thought that was really cool effect there too. Um, yeah. Just like the dead animals stuff in the first one. Yeah. Um, you gotta like the first one too, just because of its the way they did it in the history. You know, they talked about how we we already mentioned they were real dead animal parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, they even had a connection with a veterinarian that would get them some more exotic corpses, like a monkey corpse. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, some bird corpses. Instead of, because there, there were plenty of cattle corpses hanging around, and they yeah. even got lucky with a horse corpse. They even, they even got some dog and cat corpses. Yeah, from the veterinarian. And they had to shoot up with some uh, her, well, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, they tried to, but it didn't really. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, so that, and then there was the stench, and so the first one was real authentic, whereas, yeah, some of these corpses might have been a little cheesier. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, all in all, it was a... Different, but good movie in its own yeah. right. Just not the same feel as the first yeah, one. And not the sheer terror like you had in the first I'm one. I'm just more of a fan of the first one. Yeah. That's all. Me too. So. Me too. I'm the Lord of the Harvest. That's the Dennis Hopper line when he yeah. first comes in. That's yeah. one of the more iconic lines, I think, from this movie. And I, 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 I remember hearing, like, that's, I think that's like in like a, that's like an intro for some like heavy metal band that uh, I've, I've heard. I've never heard I'm that. The Lord of the oh, Harvest. But anyways, well. that was Dennis Hopper was he? I guess he was an actor. You know, he was a name for himself then, so that made it bigger. And but like you said, the first one is definitely my top still. It was my favorite over this one for sure. Well, cool. Uh, that wraps up Texas too. You know, we'll, yeah. We'll, uh, well, yeah, we'll keep going with this stuff. Next week we'll get Rob back on again and we'll yeah. verify that his his uh, connection internet connection is right. fucked up. We'll get you so, back on, Robbie. Man, yeah. sorry we lost you there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, definitely take part in the horror halftime. Throw up some memes and we can send you some free shit. Check out the horror store. Click on go to the website. Click on horror store on the top. We got some stuff for sale there that you guys would dig. Uh, if you haven't already, download us on iTunes and please give us a five star rating there. That would be awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, but yeah, that's it. We'll see you on. Uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week, guys. Have a good week. Don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> There will be blood. <laughs>